welcome to india's most comprehensive e-learning platform by juice exam prep and also special welcome to electrical as well as instrumentation students for this wonderful msq series as you all know we have started a special series on only msq that is multiple select question long back in fact 17th of january we have started we have covered lot of subjects because you all the way have prepared for you know long time from long time you are continuously preparing for the exam right yes yes is it okay now guys please see here the screen i think a uh, few minutes or few seconds there is some little bit disturbance here but i hope it's clear now right so raguram never get tensed whatever you have prepared so far keep the confidence on that and go ahead okay so well as you all know we have done msq series specially on the subjects of circuit theory and control systems signals and systems as well as digital electronics now we are going with the core subjects of course i would like to explain some of the pattern or some of the questions in msq model from the measurements however willing to learn the subject in detailed manner i can suggest you please go to the byju's exam prep and go through all the lectures which are dealt by me especially in electrical and electronic measurement krishna veni good evening and raguram good evening well so before going to the start uh, i mean topic of this in fact the first question in measurement subject of msq series let me quickly introduce uh, uh, myself as you all know about me even students they can all find the credentials here all put together i have 12 plus years teaching experience of course of course <laughs> yeah 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 i think there is some uh, software problem raguram but i think uh, it will be adjusted don't worry about that okay please focus on the class i'm extremely sorry for the inconvenience just now i got to know that there is some technical glitch clear so yes i have done everything from my side i have adjusted let us see for some time no problem so all put together i have taught more than 50000 students all across the country in the subjects of control system measurement circuit theory and industrial instrumentation also clear so let's deal the first question of the day uh, as i said again and again measurements seems to be a not of course it is a simple subject and it is a small subject also maximum electrical students will get two to three questions of four to five marks and instrumentation students may get five to six marks three uh, four to five questions maximum clear out of that there is a possibility to get at least one or two questions of msq type so what i decided is i'm like going deep i think now yeah 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 so there is a small issue with the connecting cable i guess so that's the issue i think we have resolved this yes as i said if you want to get the detailed knowledge related to measurements i sincerely advise uh, please go through all the lectures which were discussed so elaboratedly in the regular lectures on byju's exam prep in case if you want to taste only the flavor of msc questions this let us start with the first topic that is error analysis and let's continue clear so well the first question here is given two resistances r1 equals to 100 plus or minus 4% r2 equals to 20 plus or minus 2% the parallel combination of r1 and r2 will have four options are given and all the four options if you see the options are completely related to either limiting error or uncertainty first of all many of the students they don't know what is the difference between the limiting error and uncertainty second problem is most of the students they know how to solve the questions related to the series combination but they don't know how to solve for parallel combination one of the student that specifically he asked this question to me that is the reason why i'm putting this because this is very important to know okay so if you get the answer raguram you can try this and if you get the answer please let me know here otherwise you are allowed to see here first of all write down like this whenever you get this question in this particular question i will clear the concept of limiting error uncertainty not only that i will also explain how to do the things for parallel combination because if you go for any reference material they will give formula and they will give nonsense procedure but let me explain the basic procedure in a clear cut way clear so r1 if i write r1 it is given as 100 ohm let me write down 100 ohm plus or minus what is that 4 percent right so how can i write this one still 100 ohm plus or minus 4 percent of 100 ohm can you please tell me 4 percent of 100 ohm how much it is krishna veni 4 percent of 100 obviously this is 4 ohm right so people do call this particular resistance as a delta r1 which is considered as a tolerance right so now moving ahead if you rewrite this second one that is r2 
resistance R2 could be written as a 20 ohm. Of course, plus or minus how much it is? 2%. 2% of 20 ohm. How much that is? So 20 ohm and 2% of 20 ohm. I could say this is 0.4 ohm here. Correct? So let me call this as a delta R2 here. So we have two resistances. Of course, delta R1 is the first one and delta R2 is the second one. Now, if you get the answer, please let me know in the comment section. I will be very happy to see the final answer here. Clear? Right. Now, R1 and R2 are known to you. What is the formula for parallel combination here? So if I say the equivalent resistance for time being, let me call that as a capital R. It could be written as R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, you cannot apply the standard formulas here because you might have studied that add both the limiting errors, you will get the answer. Multiply, or else you know, do some kind of formulative approach. But here, you cannot apply any formula. You have to go from the basics. Clear? So, well, <coughs> right, 100 ohm and 4% of 100 is 4, right? 4% of 100 is 4. Raghuram, please look at that. 4% of 100 is 4. Well, now let's go with the basic idea here. What is basic idea? If you want to find out, first of all, tell me the overall resistance capital R. Is it the function of uh, two resistors here? Yes, it is a function of two resistors R1 and R2. What is the function? That function can be written as R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, you can either actually make it as a combination of product here and combination of summation. If you continue the procedure, you will get the answer. But let me explain the basic so that even in the exam, if you get a new question, you will be able to answer. So, if you want to find out the you know, uh, error specification in R, because R is the equivalent resistance here. If you want to find out delta R, the only best approach here is, one second. So, delta R could be written as dou R divided by dou R1. That means partially differentiate the resistance R with respect to R1. And this must be multiplied by the error specification of the R1. Well, and then we can write down this again as dou R divided by dou R2, of course, this should be multiplied by delta R2. This is the standard procedure. Now, once you get delta R, then delta R by R into 100 will be your requirement. Simple, very simple answer, isn't it? Now, how do we get this delta R by R1? So, let me call this, in fact, if you want to get the absolute maximum error, then it is always suggestible to take the magnitude for this one and magnitude for this one. Can you please tell me what is delta R by dou R by R1 here? dou r by <laughs> dou r1 so that means go back here this is your resistance uh, differentiate this with respect to r1 even, even it may take little bit more time but you will not get any wrong answer so my intention is to make you accurate and then improve your speed without being accurate if you go for the speed then obviously you will fall in trap right so now this could be written as r1 plus r2 right and then <laughs> as you are differentiating with the you know, dou R1, so I could say, what should I say? In a numerator, when you differentiate, then you will going to get R2 here, minus, what else you will going to have? R1, R2, that's it, into 1 here, correct? So, moving ahead, it is very clear cut, uh, you know, explanation here. I could say this as R2 square divided by R1 plus R2 whole square here, correct? R1 plus R2 whole square. I hope you understood. Raghu and Krishna, when any answer from your side, I am waiting for your answer. This is one side of the story. At the same time, what would be this value here? Dou R by dou R2. If you differentiate the resistance capital R with respect, uh, with respect to R2, what value you are going to get or what you supposed to get here? So now, you please use all your basics properly. Then you will get R1 plus R2 whole square. Of course, in the numerator, it will going to be equal to R1 plus R2 whole into R1 minus R1 and R2 here, right? So, this will going to be equal to R1 square divided by R1 plus R2 square. So, after this much of elaborated explanation, we understood what is there here and we also understood what is there here. Now, let's call this as equation 1 which is very, very popular as far as the limiting error is considered. Now, if you go ahead, what would be delta R now? So, be relaxed. Be relaxed. Don't go here and there. Apply basics. No formulative approach is required. Let's solve from the basics itself. So, R2 divided by R1 plus R2 whole square. That is what we have. And then additional to that, we have delta R1. Correct. So, fine. And then moving ahead, 
R1 divided by R1 plus R2 whole square, R1 plus R2 whole square into delta R2. Now we are almost at the end of the solution. Let me go ahead. Delta R is equal to R2 by R1 plus R2 is how much? Can you please tell me what is R2 here? R2 could be taken as 20 here. R1 can be taken as 100 ohm. It was so simple here. Right? So therefore, I can say 20 divided by 120 whole square into delta R1 is how much? <laughs> delta R1 is 4 ohm, right? So let me write down 4 plus. What about this one? This is 100 divided by 120 whole square into 0.4. Though it looks like you know big approach, but this is a standard approach. If you follow this, you will never fill into the and uh, fall into the trap, and you will get the answer for every question clearly. So 20 divided by 120, that is 1 by 6, I guess. Yes. And then <laughs> 1 by 6 whole square. So 1 by 36 into 4. Right. So I can say 1 by 36 into 4. Right. 1 by 36 into 4 plus what about this one? 1 by 12. So it is going to be <laughs> 1 by 1.2, right? So 100 divided by 120, I could say, at 5 by 6. So, it is going to be 25 divided by 36 into 0.4 here, right? So, moving ahead, uh, this value could be easily written as 36 will be there in the denominator. Let me write down. And then 4 plus 25 into 0.4. 25 into 0.4. What happened, Raghu? I didn't see your answer. So, 25 into 0.4, it is 10 plus 4. So, it is going to be 14, right? So, 14 all put together, this could be written as a 7 divided by 18, which is actually equal to how much? 7 divided by 18, 0 0.38, excellent, very good, very good, very good, very good, lovely Raghuram, 0 0.389 ohm, correct? So, this is the resistance or, you know, or the error specification of delta R, that means the maximum possible limiting error that can come in the overall resistance is going to be 0 0.38 9 ohm. Clear? Very good, Raghuram. You are doing very good. Then why you are so worried about the exam, final exam? I am seriously disappointed from your comment, right? So, you are really doing good. No need to worry. Just go with the confidence. Capital R equals to, what is the value here? Just look at this one. <laughs> Capital R equals to 100 into 1, uh, yes, 100 into 20, right? 100 into 20 divided by 120. So, what would be the value here? 100 into 20 divided by 120 so i would be saying this as 16.67 so 16.67 ohm is the nominal resistance nominal equivalent resistance this is 16.67 then after this much of calculation we understood that r is equal to 16.67 ohm and delta r is equal to this then percentage of limiting error how much that will be limiting error any answer from your side Waiting for your answer, Raghuram and Krishnaveni. Delta R divided by R into 100. So, what would be that value here? Simple here. Yes, very good, very good, very good, very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 Raghu, I am not, disp I am not, I mean, what I mean to say is you are such a brilliant student and such a sincere student and such a good student, then you should say very confidently, yes, I will going to hit the rock. Right, that kind of confidence I am expecting. That is why I am getting disappointed. Right, so as you have prepared so well, I have been seeing your consistent effort and hard work from the last few months. Right, so you should not get any of the discouragement. Clear? That is my intention. I hope you got the point. Right, so <laughs> delta R is equal to, and I am agreeing completely with you. So it is a quite natural for every student. Right, <laughs> but you should come out of that. Then only you will become a topper, isn't it? So, it is equal to 2.33 percent. So, <coughs> yeah, yeah, a limiting error percentage is 2.33 percent and uh, do you have that option as 2.23 percent somewhere around this one. So, option C is the correct answer. But additional to that, they asked one more question also. What is that? That is uncertainty. How do we find the uncertainty? Very simple. Let us take equation 1, okay. Let us take equation 1. For uncertainty analysis, so please see here, this is very very important, uncertainty and especially for instrumentation student, <laughs> if you want to calculate uncertainty analysis from equation 1, from equation 1 or take equation 1 and both sides you square it, right. So when we square on both sides, what you will going to have? Delta R square equals to, obviously it will become now A 
and this will become b a plus b whole square it will become right so a plus b whole square it will become so it will be inherently equal to so please see here r2 divided by r1 plus r2 right whole square whole square into delta r1 this is totally a right so let me square this one plus a square and this one is going to be b right so how can i write this one b square a square plus b square so r1 plus r2 again and this must be whole square here right and then into delta r2 delta r2 of course this must be whole square so this is something like a square plus b square and when i write like 2ab when i write like 2ab a square plus b square plus 2ab we need to write when you write 2 into ab then delta r1 into delta r2 will come delta r1 and delta r2 are mutually independent as far as uncertainty analysis is considered that's why we neglect the product terms so product terms can be neglected simply here clear so let's simply eliminate the product terms here it's not required right so then if it is delta r square as far as the uncertainty analysis is considered this is considered as a variance now if you want the standard deviation that is delta r could be written as what delta r could be written as so please see here so that is equal to r2 by r1 plus r2 what is that already we know r2 by r1 plus r2 how much this value is going to be that is 20 divided by 120 i have already said that this is 1 by 36 and 4 by 36 so therefore i could say all put together this is 4 by 36 whole square here right so it is 1 by 36 <laughs> this total value 1 by 36 into 4 so 4 by 36 of course one more square is there here right so just let me take a few minutes of time otherwise you will end up with the wrong calculation right so plus additional to that what you are going to have r1 by r1 plus r2 this is 100 by 120 so 10 by 12 so it is going to be how much this is going to be so i told you already one second 100 by 120 so 25 divided by 36 into 0.4 right so in uh, 25 by 36 10 by 36 whole square this is what you will be getting here so use your brilliance it is a simple math only here i hope every one of you can solve this easily 16 by 36 and 100 115 divided by 36 here clear so 116 divided by 36 what would be the value here 116 divided by 36 here so it is 29 by 9 under root of 3.22 3.22 so the final answer i'm writing here which is equal to 1.794 clear so this is uncertainty or good evening chandrasekhar how are you i feel you are good right so 1.794 right uncertainty now if you go for uncertainty calculation uncertainty uncertainty could be written as now equal to delta r divided by delta r into 100 again now when you are finding uncertainty this is the delta r you must use clear so what will be that value here so this is equal to 1.794 divided by 120 into 100 what is the percentage guys please let me know what is the percentage final answer i need right <laughs> final answer 1.794 divided by 120 sorry 1.794 divided by 120 into 100 so of course you will be getting somewhat around 1.5 percent right 1.495 so please uh, look at the calculation and select the final answer okay in case uh, if you find any uh, you know 1.495 so maybe there might be some small mistake here 1.5 instead of you know uh, so 1.8 so option b would be the correct answer for this so b and c are the correct answer for this question but i would like to explain you this even though we took a little bit more time i have given a clear idea between the difference between uh, you know a limiting error percentage of limiting error as well as uncertainty analysis clear if the question specifically mention standard deviation then you must go for the uncertainty analysis if not you can use the limiting error concept clear so most important is our function whatever we have discussed here as r equal to r1 into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 specifically this is not going to be a summation or this is not going to be uh, you know uh, subtraction 
it is not going to be purely division it is not purely addition also that's why we require to carry out the total procedure i hope you enjoyed this one right i am very much fine chandrasekhar so <coughs> now let's go to the second question as i said don't look at the strength you know uh, standard of the question because my intention is only to show the flavor of the msq right so however those who want to solve extremely good questions go to the app we have already done a lot of sessions on that right so a 0 to 100 mill uh, i mean 0 to 50 milliampere pmc instrument is used to measure a current of 25 ampere wonderful actually this is ifsd first of all look at that what is the full scale current it can measure right full scale deflection it can measure only 50 milliampere but you want to measure it to up to what that is 25 ampere correct so you are trying to measure more current with the least range meter that is the problem right so if you directly do then there is a problem here so what is the multiplication factor multiplication factor is a very simple question that is i divided by ifst right so that means how much you are willing to measure divided by the capability of the meter that is 50 into 10 power minus 3 any one of you fast can you please tell me raguram what is the answer m is how much so i think it will become 25 by 2 so 1000 divided by 2 so 500 this is a very 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 damn easy question right but what to do lot of questions in gate as well as est are in this range only from measurements especially from this topic that is estimation of the meter so multiplication factor is 500 let us leave about that and then shunt resistance how do we calculate the shunt resistance shunt resistance could be written as a meter resistance divided by m minus 1 very good what is the value here meter resistance is how much can you please tell me meter resistance where is that 25 ohm yeah very good 25 divided by m minus 1 m minus 1 that is 500 minus 1 so 499 25 yeah 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 very good nice nice no there there is a chance that four options we are having it is a multiple choice question right so be accurate on your answer 0 0.05 ohm approximately 0 0.05 ohm so the first option a is correct and even option b is also correct correct option b is also correct good so this question truly speaking it's not a difficult question of course previous question is a bit difficult question this is easy question but standard question let's move on to the next question here right now we will take we will play a little bit a small game here i will show you the question then you can think of what kind of uh, msq can be formed on this data that is really an intellectual game right so now you reach to the uh, state where you can think like a person who is setting the question paper then answering the question paper is easy isn't it so yeah 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 previous one is a lengthy one i understand that but because it includes a lot of concepts no? that's the reason the inductance of a certain moving iron ammeter with a full scale deflection of 90 degrees at 1.5 ampere is expressed as l equals 200 plus 40 theta minus uh, you know 4 theta square minus theta cube micro henry good where theta is the deflection in radians please keep this in the mind from zero position the stiffness of the spring and the angular deflection of the pointer for a current of one ampere will be given by dash so now you see in the moving iron ammeter question i wantedly not given any options but you can think like a person who uh, is creating an exam paper then you will understand how you can get the questions correct so let me show you here it is a moving iron ammeter in moving iron ammeter we know at steady state controlling torque or else let me write down directly here <laughs> in moving iron ammeter so theta will be equal to 1 divided by 2 times of k into irms square here into dl by d theta correct this is a standard equation for the deflection correct or not and whatever i you have written here it is irms in the case of uh, you know ac signal or ac input in the case of dc input this is simply dc current correct we can use the formula yes 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 that is what i am also doing now see the date of one he is saying that when you have 1.5 ampere current deflection is 90 degrees so very good case one let me say case one he was saying at when i equals to 1.5 ampere theta is equal to pi by 2 correct so now let's substitute that then it will going to become like pi by 2 that is equal to 1 divided by 2 times of k whole into 1.5 whole square 
into dl by d theta. What is that? Differentiate this one. So if you differentiate the inductance with respect to theta, what you will going to get? So 20, first of all, because if you differentiate 200 term, it's a constant term, it will be not affecting anything. 40 theta, if you differentiate, it will become 40 minus, minus 8 theta. And then again, theta t square, right? So let me write down 3 theta square into 10 to the power of minus 6 here. That's it. That's the whole point of the discussion. Now substitute pi by 2 here. And I will be very happy if you can complete the solution and put uh, give me a value of k here okay so 1.5 square and then here it will become like 20 minus 8 pi by 2 8 pi by 2 because theta is pi by 2 minus 3 into pi by 2 square pi by 2 whole square so relax it's not a difficult question it requires a little bit of patience and from here we can remove this 2 2 and get the value of k if anyone completed the value of k, then I will be very happy. Uh, Chandra Shekhar, we don't write, uh, uh, you know, see here. L value is what? L is 200. So, please see. L equals to 200 plus 40 into theta minus uh, 4 theta square, 4 theta square and minus, what else is that? Theta cube. So, theta cube, all the way you have like micro Henry here into 10 power minus 6. Now, when you differentiate this with respect to theta, because we require not the L value, we require DL by D theta. So, when you differentiate this, then you will going to get 200 is a constant term. It is not required. So, 40 theta, if you differentiate, then obviously, you will going to have simply 40 here, right? Am I right? So, just see here, 40 and minus 8 theta here and minus 3 times of theta square. Of course, we will be having into 10 power minus 6. That's what exactly I have used. I think it's very clear, right? Ashok is saying 28.69. Please look at that. Ashok is given the value of K or else is it 28.69 or 14.32 or half of that. So, please do the calculation properly and let me know. I want the answer from every one of you. It, it won't take much time. So, please keep everything accurately and let me know the answer. So, 22.22 Raghuram is saying. How come different people get different answers? Once again, both of you, please verify. Do it carefully and let me know the final answer. I am still waiting for your answer. So, you will get the value of K. Now, what else they asked? Second question is, they are asking that what would be the angular deflection of the pointer for a current of 1 ampere is how much? Clear? So, guys, both of you, please let me know. Raghu and others. Otherwise, let me do it here itself. Right? So, 1.5 whole square. 2.25, 2.25 divided by k of, oh, sorry, one second, no answer from your side, so you can take k here, so if you take k here, 1.5 into whole square, so 1.5 whole square divided by pi, and 20 minus all the way this one, 1.5 whole square, it would be like, you know, 1.5 whole square divided by pi. So, 2.25 divided by, yes, this is very simple question and we will be getting 0 0.716 here and it should be multiplied by 20 minus 8 divided by 20 minus <coughs> 8 pi divided by 2 and then minus 3 into pi divided by 2 whole square here. So, yes, 0 0.03. Where I have written 20 instead of 40? Oh, 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 guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Raghu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here it should be 40, right? So, I am extremely sorry. Yeah. Then fine, I think uh, you are you people are capable to solve this. I am extremely sorry. Just it's a very simple question because I don't want to waste the time here in the calculation. Unnecessarily we lose the focus. So get the value of k from here, right? So get the value of yeah 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 twenty two point five. So Krishnamani is also giving. Uh, most of the students are giving the same. So let me go with that twenty two point five into ten power minus six. Do you have that value? Twenty two point five into ten power minus six. Will you have the ten power minus six or not? I guess you will be having 22.5 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Please 
come from me here guys okay so once you get this value here that after calculating the total value after getting the value of k ragu please tell me whether do you have 10 power minus 6 here or not so then move ahead and the case 2 in case 2 when you are writing specifically that when the value of i is equal to 1 ampere see look at look at the question here yes 10 2.25 into 10 to the power of minus 5 okay fine i think <coughs> 2.25 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Other students, please see the calculation. 2.25 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Of course, respective units. I am not going to worry about that. So, 1 ampere is the next current. Correct? So, when the current is 1 ampere, what would be the angular deflection of the pointer? So, let us go with that. So, when the current is 1 ampere, what would be the angular deflection? Right? So, again, theta here, but it would be a lengthy question now. Right? 1 divided by 2 times of k into i square. So, as we know, I square into dl by d theta. How patience here? Because we require to calculate theta value here. 1 divided by 2 into, what is the value here? So, 2.25 into 10 to the power of minus 5. 2.25 into 10 to the power of minus 5. And then, I square is 1 ampere square into dl by d theta. dl by d theta, already we know, that is 40 minus, what is the value? 8 theta, <laughs> 8 theta minus 3 theta square. Right, into 10 to the power of minus 6. Relax. You will get a quadratic equation. Solve this carefully. Then you will get the final value of the deflection theta in radians you need to keep. Right. However, this is the first case too. So, here two questions are there if you see. First one is k in the respective units. Right. Respective units. And the second question is going to be theta. Usually, according to my knowledge, as I have observed a lot of MSQ questions from the couple of years, I found that naturally MSU questions are time taking. The reason is multiple concepts you need to verify to go with the final options, right? So, when you feel that more than two options are correct, obviously length will be increased, right? So, that's why MSU questions will take the significant time, but and of course, there is every possibility that out of four options, two options you have selected, but maybe one more option is also correct answer. After investing a lot of time, even again, we are not very sure whether you are correct or not completely, right? Because one of the option you might overlook, right? So, that's the reason why every time you should be very, very careful here. Now, let's go to the next question here. So, this question is from the watt meter concept. I hope you people can make it very fast because you are electrical students, right? For IN students, this is a standard question again. So, as I said, I will go into discuss only the standard questions here. I don't want to make your life so miserable by discussing so difficult questions at this point of time because the time is very near i don't want to decrease your confidence by going so deeply right unlike my regular classes 250 volt and 10 ampere electrodynamometer watt meter has a resistance of current resistance of current and potential coil of 0.5 ohm and 12500 ohm very good so resistance of the current coil let me write down that as rc which is given as 0 0.5 ohm here correct and resistance of the potential coil, how much they are saying? 12,500 ohm, right? So, find the percentage of error due to each of the two methods of connections shown in the figures below with the unity power factor, very nice. Load, I mean, voltage across the load is 250 volt and current that is carried by the load is around 12 ampere here, clear? So, neglect the error due to the uh, presence, uh, uh, pressure coil inductance. They are saying that neglect the error due to the error because of the pressure coil inductance not because of the pressure coil resistance right so figure one let me call this as a figure one and this is a figure two now have you seen in figure one <coughs> as the current that is flowing through the load it is also flowing through the current coil so because of the current coil resistance the extra power will be reduced right so what would be the error in the figure one then so error in figure one I have explained the detailed concept related to this almost 30 to 40 minutes in the regular lectures on by BEP app. So, if anybody is interested, you can go there. So, the power that is consumed here, the extra power, error, error in figure 1, any one of you or error in connection 1 is whatever the power that is dropped by the resistance of the current coil, IL square into RL, right? That is simple answer. This is, right? sorry, IL square into I am sorry, RC here, correct? So, L square into 
RC current coil current right yes yes very good so look at what is the IL square he himself is saying that load is carrying 12 ampere current here so 12 whole square into what is the current coil resistance 0 0.5 right so 0 0.5 any one of you put up here 144 into 0 0.5 that is 72 watt this is the error correct this is the error but what is the true value here so true value of power true value of power pt how can i write so <laughs> load voltage 250 load current 12 ampere 250 into 12 ampere and cos phi is 1 power factor is 1 means unity power factor cos phi is 1 so what would be the answer here 250 into 12 can you see i think it will become 3000 right so this is 3000 watt then percentage of error could be written as equal to percentage of error is equal to so this error so that is 72 watt divided by 3000 watt here so 3000 watt into 100 here so what is the final answer here any one of you please let me know the final answer guys waiting for your answer so 72 by 3000 into 100 very good very good ragu do the same way and tell me the final answer ashok what is the answer into 100 i think 2.4 this is 2.4 this is one question right in the same question we need to find out the other answers also isn't it so what could be the other value so error from figure 2 so error <laughs> in figure 2 what would be the error in figure 2 so error in figure 1 and error in figure 2 so figure 2 means connection 2 in this case what is happening is the error because load current is happily flowing into the load but the voltage across this potential coil will have some problem with the ip current because some current will be dropped uh, through the ip that is potential coil resistance so what would be the answer now here so simple here the error would be written here as uh, the voltage across the load square divided by the potential coil resistance rp so if anybody want to know why it is how it is what is the background behind this and what is the proof for this please visit the regular classes then only you can find it all the things otherwise it's difficult for you also i know that 250 whole square divided by 250 whole square divided by 12500 so 1 2 divided by 500 what would be the answer here anyone can you please tell me 250 whole square 250 whole square here divided by 12500 5 so this is simply like 5 watts very less amount of power is dropped here once again the true power is still again 3000 watt here then what is the percentage of error here so the percentage of error could be written here as equal to 5 divided by 3000 so let me write down 5 divided by 5 watt divided by 3000 watt into 100 right so therefore what should i say 5 divided by 3000 into 100 so its value equal to 0 0.167 percent that's all this is 0.167 percent uh, very nice very nice very nice ashok right 0.16 and 2.4 here right so likewise we can see two questions of course now you can pick up the correct options here figure 1 is 2.4 that is perfectly all right b and figure 2 e is 0.167 so that is d b and d be careful when you are making the answer after a lot of hard work we got like 0 0.167 and when you are selecting the options uh, immediately you may be in rush and when you are in rush definitely you will commit the mistake and there is a probability that you may select option c also correct so be careful with that right so b and d are correct answers for this let's go to the next question here next question would be very simple because i have taken this question by keeping the instrumentation students in the mind because uh, electrical students i know they can solve this just like that it's a cake walk for them this is the three phase measurement and now forget about this option so look at the diagram right so for electrical students as i said this is very very simple now when you have three phase power measurement like this of course this is <laughs> you know the impedance magnitude of the impedance and the phase angle so what would be the watt meter one reading here can you tell me here watt meter one reading is how much here so watt meter one reading w1 could be written as so the line voltage vl into line current into cos of 30 minus 5 am i right cos of 30 minus 5 so vl into il into cos 30 minus 5 
and again again i am saying that how it is if you want to know obviously it's a lengthy concept you have to go through the regular classes only no other option right so excellent excellent i'm seeing no uh, now new student shobhan kumar very good very good so w1 is this and w2 let me say w2 which is equal to vl into il line voltage into line current this is not load voltage or no uh, load current this is line voltage into line current 30 minus 5 30 plus 5 so these are considered as uh, the watt meter readings for both the watt meters correct so therefore now look at that what is the rms value of the line current here because it is a star network line current and phase current both are same which is equal to line voltage divided by so <laughs> line voltage is also given like 100 volt so divided by 5 so <laughs> yes magnitude of impedance because you need the rms value of the current here so therefore it could be written as 100 divided by 5 so naturally this is equal to 20 ampere rms value of the current and the value of theta the value of the phi that is given clearly as 60 degrees right phi is equal to 60 degrees what would be the correct answer then very simple just go with this flow so vl is 100 il is 20 cos of 30 minus this is going to be 60 here so this is what is the value here get what is the value here for every one of you w1 is how much guys fast w1 is how much w2 is easy 100 into 20 cos of 30 plus 60 finish this is game over cos 90 is 0 so this is 0 what w1 is how much any answer from any one of you please mention in the comment section i am waiting for your answer so i think it is definitely a non-zero value so one of the watt meter reads zero watt oh perfectly all right this is correct both the watt meters reads zero watt no and then both the watt meter shows the same reading that is also no and this is see actually the concept behind this is a very good concept if you refer the regular classes then you will understand how much we struggle to get these equations right but the options make it very simple right so sometimes the options also very simple easily we can calculate this right 17 uh, 1732.05 1732.051 if you get uh, this kind of options lucky you are really very lucky but anyway the answer is option a and option d both are correct let me quickly go to the next question and i will give some time at least two minutes one or two minutes all of you please take it seriously and let me know the answer here so <laughs> which of the following statement is true about the two watt meter method for measurement of power in three phase circuit clear so Power can be measured using two watt meter method only for star connected three phase circuits. Yes or no? Option A, please look at this question and tell me whether first option is correct or not. Guys, so what, what are the correct options for this? When two watt meter shows identical reading, the power factor is unity. So first of all, in two watt meter method, let me write down from two watt meter method, two watt meter method, very good, very good, B, C, D, yes, nice, excellent. Because we can make it in star as well as delta also, no other, uh, you know, obviously this is a basic common sense, right? So theta would be written as or phi can be written as power factor uh, you know the angle not power factor cos phi we will write now so that phi could be written as tan inverse of root 3 into w1 minus w2 divided by w1 plus w2 this is one more important standard result from 2 watt meter method now you see option b look at option b what is the status of option b here option b what it is saying in option b it was clearly mentioned that when two watt meter shows the identical readings that means w1 and w2 both are equal so if w1 and w2 both are equal phi will be zero and then power factor could be written as what power factor is equal to cos zero or cos phi we can say cos zero which is equal to one yes then option b is correct now go to the say uh, third option when the power factor is 0.5 one of the watt meter reads zero so very nice one of the watt meter is a zero option c i am looking for option c in option c is saying that one of the watt meter reads zero so let's say w2 is reading zero watt 
Then what is the phi value here? Phi is root 3. <laughs> I mean tan inverse of root 3. When w2 is 0, it will become w1 divided by w1. So simple here. So it is going to be 60 degrees here. So phi is equal to 60 degrees. So the power factor is equal to cos phi, which is equal to cos 60. And I would be saying simply this as equal to 1 by 2. Right. So that means option C is also correct answer. Right. And option D, last one, when the radius of two, the two watt meters are equal, but of opposite sign, the power factor is zero. So, what this is the last option is saying. If you already completed, just have patience for one minute, because there might be some students who don't know these concepts. So, W1 equal to minus W2, or else W2, let me write down W2 is equal to minus W1. Then, again, phi could be written as a tan inverse of root 3 specifically tan inverse of root 3 and this value w1 minus w2 w1 minus w2 it will become 2 w1 here divided by <laughs> what is this w1 plus w2 both are same and infinity here right so what he is saying the power factor is 0 so therefore i should say here it will become 0 therefore the phi will be equal to 90 degrees here simple 90 degrees then power factor would be equal to cos phi that is equal to cos 90 i would be saying cos 90 degrees here so which is equal to zero yes then what is the option d option d is also correct answer for this so i think you people have done very fast compared to me b c d are the correct answers for this question because you people are electrical students so it is a cakewalk to you right however for instrumentation student they need to work out little bit more here so let's come to the last question of the discussion this question those who attended my you know special lecture on dual slope dvm they can solve very fast this question clear right no 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 shobin kumar shobin kumar uh, yeah uh, see as far as the two watt meter method is considered yes you can get that kind of question but in the beginning of the lecture i told you that i am not going to discuss so difficult questions now because the intention and the purpose of this particular lecture is to show you how msc questions can be framed right before this we have solved champion series we have solved pyqs we have solved super 11 questions and those are the difficult questions right so because all, almost exam is one week ahead right one week or 10 days ahead right approximately so if we, we if we start discussing so difficult questions you know like in the regular classes then a lot of students will uh, you know lose the confidence and moreover the idea of this session is to show you the flavor of the uh, msqs okay so please keep that in the mind okay right so now this question can anybody answer this question guys first i think one more question is there somewhere i missed it right okay that is missing from the bridges fine this is a good question look at this a 200 millivolt full scale dual slope three end of dvm dmm that means of course this is the digital multimeter only shobin kumar uh, yes 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 yeah 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 yes sir we have to prepare for any questions perfect correct Shopin, more important thing is my class. If you visit the regular classes, you will find that I always discuss the questions one step beyond the gate. Okay. So, the students who are there in the chart box, they know very well about me. But it is not the right time to go so difficult, go to so difficult questions. Otherwise, students will go to lose the confidence. Okay. Right. So, 3 end of digital DMM has a reference voltage, 100 millivolt, of course. Right. And first integration time, one second, one second. First integration time 100 millisecond for an input of 100 plus 10 cos 100 pi t okay millivolt the conversion time without taking the auto zero phase correction okay fine right now relax first of all though it is mentioned as v in equal to 100 plus 10 cos so 100 pi t obviously it is mentioned as millivolt now I would like to tell you here, maybe the actual analog voltage is this. This is the actual voltage. However, this is the unwanted voltage. This is a sinusoidal component present here, which is usually considered as unwanted component in the regular voltage, right? So, this is unwanted voltage. Now, you may ask a question, sir, how do you know that this is an unwanted voltage? Because this DC voltage can be measured because you, if you see, the reference voltage is given as 100 millivolt. And this is a dual slope DVM, uh, DMM. So then definitely when the reference voltage is 100 mm, which is a DC, 
you can only measure the dc quantity so therefore i can say this is the regular dc actual value this is the actual value in input actual value and this is un unwanted component unwanted component first of all according to the dual slope dvm we all know that second integration time t2 is equal to the input voltage divided by the reference voltage into first integration time capital t1 clear second integration time equal to v in divided by v reference into your first integration time what is v in here v in any one of you first integration time is 100 milliseconds so of course everything is same here right 100 millivolt and here as i said input we need to take only this not the sinusoidal component here so 100 millivolt we have taken reference is also 100 millivolt and t1 what is t1 here t1 is 100 milliseconds fine 100 milliseconds so obviously first integration time and the second integration time both are same why because the reference input and input voltage amplitude is same when both of them are same the uh, time taken for the first integration as well as for second integration naturally it will come same right then total uh, conversion time is how much total conversion time conversion time could be written as capital tc which is equal to first integration time t1 plus second integration time small t2 this is what i have discussed earlier so it is how much 100 milliseconds here and plus 100 milliseconds so all put together i could uh, you know get like 200 milliseconds so d is correct and uh, yes one one second c is also correct right c is also correct c and d both are correct but what you are missing here is this is why i told you that you should never be overconfident right so option a have you seen the unwanted signal cannot affect in measurement the unwanted signal can affect in measurement so that means what is the role of this one what happens here is it is the dual slope integrator right so dual slope dmm means it will integrate it will integrate the reference input voltage in the first integration time so first integration time is how much 100 milliseconds for 100 milliseconds amount of time it will integrate this input voltage tell me what will going to happen this unwanted signal has a time period of how much so omega is equal to 100 pi here which is equal to 2 pi f without any doubt i can say f is equal to how much here pi pi will get cancelled f is equal to 50 hertz correct f is equal to 50 hertz so from here i can say the time period of the unwanted signal that is time period of the unwanted signal. very good raguram very good excellent time period of the unwanted signal equals to 1 by 50 which is equal to 20 milliseconds 20 milliseconds correct so it is 20 milliseconds the great thing here is your first integration time so if you see all the way one second let me write down here first integration time means you are going to integrate the input voltage almost for 100 milliseconds right so that's what it is given 100 milliseconds whereas the time period of the unwanted signal is only 20 milliseconds correct 20 milliseconds and i'm very sure that first integration time equal to five times of the unwanted signal correct so i already told you if at all the first integration time is the integer multiple of the unwanted time period then what will going to happen i can say in 100 milliseconds five cycles can come because each cycle has 20 millisecond means in 100 milliseconds five, sec five cycles will come indirectly you can take like this from 0 to 100 millisecond if you integrate this what you will going to get its average value because it is integrating five cycles so when you integrate five complete cycles obviously your net value will become zero because the average value is zero correct so that means as you are integrating for 100 millisecond which is equal to five times of your unwanted signal five cycles will be averaged and its value will be equal to zero that means the unwanted signal cannot affect the measurement so option a is also correct answer so i think uh, this question is a good question very good question so option a and option c and option d are the correct answers for this question now 
I would like to mention this one of the very important point as far as the measurement subject is considered. Okay, measurements technically it is not a uh, you know difficult subject, but you cannot ignore that. We have already uh, solved champion series. We have already solved monsoon series. We have already taken revision series. We have taken PYQ series. All put together along with the rank up course and the regular classes on app. This is more than sufficient. Correct. So lot many things we have done. And again, I am saying if you are still in a plan to write a full length mock test or as the subject wise mock test, get all the services provided by the Baiju's exam prep. Uh, and moreover, uh, once you write the mock test, a detailed solution will be given. And your rank also will be, uh, you know, shown to you. And you will also get good practice with the virtual calculator also. So, if you want to attend the mock test, I would say Baiju's exam prep has the best platform. Okay, right. So, yes, Raghuram Pal is asking something, sir. <coughs> I didn't understood, right. Yeah, fine. So, hope you really enjoyed the session. As I said, the purpose of this session is mainly to show you the flavor of the MS question. I think I have succeeded. Hope you, uh, yeah. Yeah, then okay. <laughs> the Paul is asking to say one single statement, right? Okay, measurements in tackle, Jaden, right? <coughs> See, as I said, Paul, please remember this point. Measurements, definitely, it is not a difficult topic. But as it is easy, People will overlook that and they will do a lot of mistakes. That's why be good with the basics on measurement. I'm thinking, I, 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 I can say that, yes, you can do that. Okay. And second thing is, if you refer only previous questions in measurements, 80% of your work will be done. You need not to so aggressively prepare here and there because I have been seeing the questions that are uh, regularly asked in the gate examination. Most of the concepts behind the questions are so repetitive. Clear? So, yes, yes, yes. No, Paul, no, you cannot, yeah, you can expect the questions of power factor from two watt meter method. That's why I have included the question. There is a separate measurement circuit for power factor, but that is not required, but that is important for ESC syllabus. Okay, right. So, that's all about this. Sir, are you coming for exam analysis? Uh, that is uh, still not finalized, Raghuram, but uh, hope I may come. But still, that may be finalized by tomorrow. So, hope this session is useful to every one of you. In case if you find any difficulty in measurement subject, reach me. I will help you at any particular time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. All the best to everyone. Thank you.